This is Pastor Richard from St. Paul's Lutheran Church, and you are watching Anchored in Christ, a weekly vlog from St. Paul's Lutheran Church for our Sunday school teachers, parents, and parishioners to know what we believe and why from God's Word, as well as to be anchored in God's Word, Christ's Word for us as a church and as Christians. Now, the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about things such as law and gospel. We talked a little bit about the books of the Bible, and we also talked a little bit about salvation history, watching the promise of the gospel from the very beginning of Genesis 3, and then being promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and flowing throughout that Old Testament through the nation of Israel, King David, and so forth, until it comes uh, in that birth of Christ, the Son of God, into time and space and history, uh, being revealed to, to everyone, this light uh, coming into the world in this wonderful Christmas story of Jesus being born for the sake of redeeming humankind, to live amongst us, to live that perfect life we could not live and die the death of it we could not die and then rising from the grave and accomplishing that great salvation again promised from the days of old now today we want to specifically focus in on the book of exodus and in the book of exodus the very beginning we see moses being called out to be that prophetic voice uh, not only to the israelites but also uh, the egyptian nation of the time and what we see is when we first encounter this story we see the lord god confronting moses in in the book of Exodus in this story of the burning bush. Now, with the story of the burning bush, there's a couple elements, actually one main element that I'd like to hit that is really kind of quite profound. Uh, it's, it's more of a, um, if you would say, a maybe a rabbit trail. Maybe we can go in the ditch a little bit with this, but it is nonetheless very important. And that is this. When we see the story of Moses encountering the Lord in the burning bush, what we have is an absolutely profound picture and example uh, uh, showing us uh, how the Lord functions, not only in this Old Testament story, but also seeing how this parallels communion. Yes, communion. Well, let me just share with you a little bit what we're talking about here. Let me read just a few things here. In Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 21, we see Moses encountering uh, the Lord in the story of the burning bush. Now, this story is indeed very familiar, uh, but in reflecting on the story in connection to communion, we can ask several questions. First is this, is the Lord a bush? Yes, is the Lord a bush? To this, we would obviously say, no, the Lord is not a bush. No way, no how. And the second question is this, does the bush represent the Lord? Yes, does the bush represent the Lord? To this, we would say, no way, no how. <laughs> the bush does not represent the Lord. And then maybe the third question we could ask is this. This third question, does the bush turn into the Lord? Yes, does the bush turn into the Lord? And again, the answer is no. Uh, it doesn't make sense. So how would we would explain what is going on here is this. And what is happening in Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 21 is this. We would say that in a profound way, that the Lord was in, with, and under the bush. The bush did not turn into the Lord, nor did the bush merely represent the Lord. Rather, the bush was fully present. It was burning, yet not consumed. The Lord was also fully present. The Lord appeared to him, that is Moses, in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. You see, this is really no different than what is happening with communion. Uh, with the sacrament of communion. Uh, in the bread and the wine, the Lord is present in, with, and under the elements. Uh, we hear these words, take and eat. This is my body. Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant. Jesus does not say, take and eat. This represents my body. And he doesn't say, drink from it, all of you, for this represents my blood of the covenant. Nor does Jesus say, take and eat. This changes into my body. Drink from it, all of you, for this changes into my blood of the covenant. He doesn't say any of this. You see, just as the Lord was in, with, and under the bush, so it is with communion. And this is a wonderful, wonderful way to teach communion from this Old Testament passage uh, for our children. So when we receive the elements in communion, we receive the real presence of Jesus uh, in, with, and under for the forgiveness of all of our sins. So there you have it. Uh, it's a wonderful story. Now, even if you don't go right towards communion, at least taking a step back and asking and really dissecting what's going on in this passage, that the bush doesn't represent the Lord and uh, the Lord doesn't turn into uh, a bush, uh, but that the Lord is fully present in that bush, uh, in, with, and under it, uh, it really sets that framework and that foundation for maybe later on teaching uh, what communion is. Uh, so I 
I would encourage you as teachers, as parents, as you think about this story, not only teaching it in connection with the salvation history, that God is working in this time, in this place, calling Moses out to continue uh, that promise of the Messiah through this nation of Israel, but we also see stories like this as ways and opportunities to set the stage in order to help teach our other doctrines, such as communion, understanding uh, Christ fully present in, with, and under the bread and the wine, uh, there for us his body and his blood for the forgiveness of all of our sins. So I hope that helps, and we'll catch you next time.